And this is a Fox News alert. Terror rocked the United States this weekend. And welcome to Hannity. 28-year-old Ahmad Khan Rahami, a naturalized U.S. citizen born in Afghanistan, captured by police earlier today. Now, he's suspected of setting off bombs this weekend in New York and New Jersey. Now, for the very latest, we go to Fox News' as Rick Leventhal. He's got standing by with uh, what's happening. Rick, what's going on? John, remarkably fast work by law enforcement who caught Rahami after a shootout in Linden, New Jersey, just three hours after the FBI released his photo and roughly 48 hours after that first explosive device, a pipe bomb, went off in Seaside Park, New Jersey. The blast here in Chelsea Saturday night injured 29 people, many hit by shrapnel, including BBs and ball bearings from the pressure cooker bomb that was very similar to the one used by the Boston Marathon bombers. A second pressure cooker bomb four blocks to the north of us did not de detonate. And pipe bombs at a train station also failed to explode, even after a couple of homeless guys grabbed the backpack the bombs were in and carried it a thousand yards. A police robot later detonated one of those devices. And late today, after that shootout that left several officers hurt and Rahami with a couple of bullet wounds, he was charged in Union County, New Jersey, with five counts of attempted murder of a law enforcement officer and weapons charges. He's being held on $5.2 million bail on his first court appearance tentatively set for next Wednesday, September 28th. But Sean Rahami will also likely be hit with numerous state and federal charges in connection with the attack, so he likely won't be uh, bonding out of jail anytime soon. All right, Rick Leventhal, thank you. Also tonight, authorities say Rahami was not on law enforcement's radar before the bombings. Joining us with more, Fox News Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge. Now, Catherine, he did apparently sued police along with his family for profiling of Muslims, correct? Well, that's right. We're going to get to that in just one second, Sean. Late today, there was new information about prior contact between the FBI and the suspect, Rahami, after a domestic dispute. The victim there alleged that Rahami also showed signs of possible radicalization at that time. Two sources confirmed the FBI followed up on the lead, but there was not enough to pursue it at that time, and the original allegations were withdrawn. Here's how the FBI described the episode at today's news conference. There's nothing to indicate that currently he was on, his, on our radar. We had a report of a domestic incident some time ago. Uh, that was the, the allegations were recanted, and I don't have any other information. We'll keep digging. The FBI is very focused on Rahami's overseas travel and at least three trips to his native Afghanistan. A law enforcement source says the frequency of the trips was not suspicious at the time because of his family ties, and the number of trips did not suggest Rahami had outside help to pay for the flights. A second law enforcement source backed up that account, adding the FBI is now investigating who Rahami met with overseas and whether they planted the seeds of radicalization. Rahami immigrated to the U.S. legally with his family when he was seven years old, and he is also a naturalized U.S. citizen. While police say they are not looking for other suspects or a broader cell, they are running down leads from the New York City surveillance video where the pressure cooker bomb exploded, injuring 29. We identified, well, we have a video of two persons who picked up the bag, took the, um, the device out of it, and then walked off with the bag. Now, we went back to see where they came from. They looked like uh, there were two gentlemen just strolling the, uh, up and down 7th Avenue at the time. We have no information that would link them to this at all. However, we still want to talk to them. Based on the news conferences today, there was really a long stretch from 2002 until 2012 where there was a dispute over the family's restaurant. And according to court papers, they sued at one point, alleging that they were being marginalized and targeted because of their faith, Sean. All right, Catherine Herridge, thank you. Americans are on edge tonight. And a Drudge Report headline from earlier today, it sums it up uh, best. It says, ISIS among us. The bombings in New York and New Jersey weren't the only terror-related attacks this weekend. On Saturday, a 22-year-old Somali man stabbed 10 people at a mall in Minnesota. It is being reported that he mentioned Allahu Akbar during the attack and allegedly asked one of the victims if he was a Muslim. ISIS, in fact, has claimed responsibility for that bloody rampage. And that's not all. Late last week in New York City, a homeless Palestinian man with a Jordanian passport, well, he went after police officers with a meat cleaver after they caught him trying to remove a boot from his car. 
A boot is one of those things that prevents a car from leaving a parking spot. If you don't live in New York, you might not understand that. But anyway, according to the New York Post, the U.S. was trying to deport him, and he was shouting Allahu Akbar once again before lunging at police. One of the brave officers was released from the hospital on Friday. Look at this video. Struck in the face by a meat cleaver, he needed 70 stitches in his face. 70. Anyway, that's among the news for today. And joining us now, we have former New York City Mayor, no, yeah. Rudy Giuliani is with us apparently. Okay, so, Mr. Mayor, how are you? Yes. How are you, Sean? Let me start with, you know, this guy recently went to Afghanistan. One of his friends was interviewed earlier with uh, Shep Smith on Fox Today, and I, I paid very close attention. He's saying that he changed when he went there. You know, if somebody's going to visit Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Saudi Arabia, why is that a red flag in my mind? Is that fair? Sean, that's very fair, and I disagree with the FBI analysis of this, and I disagreed with it also with regard to the Boston Marathon bomber, uh, Zanayev. Uh, I thought it was a major red flag when he not, he not only went to Russia, but he went to Chechnya. And here's, here's what I object to and what I'd like to know the answer to. Did they give that information to the local police? Because if they didn't, then the FBI needs to be straightened out also, and somebody has to have the courage to say that. When the FBI has information like this, the reason they're not following up on it is because there are only 14,000 FBI agents. There are 36,000 New York City police officers. There are over 800,000 sworn law enforcement officers in the United States. The FBI has to begin to give this information to the local police because maybe they'll have the extra cop or two that can watch a guy like this. Now, I put the responsibility for ISIS completely on Obama and Hillary Clinton. This would not have happened had they not withdrawn the troops from Iraq. They were handed a somewhat stable Iraq that miraculously the surge under Petraeus worked. We had stabilized Iraq. We had used the Sunnis to fight for us to win the eastern part of Iraq. And then when Obama imposed his deadline, I, I, I have no idea what kind of irrational mind would think you should have a timetable for a war. But when we pulled out, a lot of those Sunnis went into the hills and the other Sunnis joined ISIS. That joined up with the Syrian uh, uh, rebels. And then all of a sudden, and it's even the JV worse. team. It's worse the because they have the oil now, as, as, as an ability to finance and, we, and, we, and advance and, their and caliphate left, and pay for it. And, and we left them with a fountain of gold, right? We left them with a fountain of gold. And they are, now in 28, they are now in 28 countries. In the last year, we've had more attacks in America than at any time since September 11. From September 11 until Obama, we had no attacks on America. They've all started under Obama. They are provoked by his weakness, by her weakness, by her having uh, the government of Libya overthrown, where ISIS also has a major stronghold. We lost four Americans there. She seems to have forgotten that. And let, me, let me ask we you are this. Living, we're, living, we're living in a much more complex and dangerous world than we were living in before Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton came into office. Yeah, you know, Hillary voted for that war, and then she pulled out of the war. As you said, they gave a drop dead date. That created the vacuum for ISIS. Now, this is important. And then she callously no, said recently, I, I made a mistake. We've got to learn from the mistake. Now, if I'm the parent of one of the nearly 5,000 people that died there, or if I'm one of the brave men and women that fought, bled, lost a, a limb, a leg, an arm, or was disfigured, and oops, I made a mistake, and we got to learn from it, uh, that's a pretty Look, severe mistake. Sean, and I don't know. I, I, I don't know what Hillary is good at. I can tell you what she's not good at, foreign policy. Well, I, she well, voted for the war. Yeah, she for the war. voted for the war. Then she was against the war. She was against the surge. She embarrassed Petraeus, you might remember, when he appeared before Congress to describe how the surge was working. And the reality is everything in the world that was handed over to her when she became Secretary of State was much worse when she left office. Not to mention all the emails that she exposed and all the money she took for the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the foundation, for the Clinton Foundation. I mean, the, the, rea the reality is that this woman's knowledge 
of foreign affairs is like. But this, this is as big a choice election as I think we'll ever see in our lifetime on every big issue from Obamacare to the economy to the Supreme Court justices. So, but, but there are three issues that impact this issue profoundly. One, one candidate can say the words radical Islam. I mean, the torture. Thank God. The, the, the tortured pretzel, you know, they're turning themselves into pretzels. They ride oh, a razor's you, edge you, of political you, correctness. You, you, they can't say it. And, and here's the other two. Building a wall will protect the country and extreme vetting. Here's my question on vetting. Hillary wants a 550 percent increase in refugees. Are every right. top law enforcement official, intelligence official, Comey, Clapper, Steinbeck, McCall, General Allen, have all warned that, and Brennan, all warned that ISIS will infiltrate the refugee population. She wants a 550% increase. Here's, so here's my question. If somebody, I know the Saudis, for example, gave her, what, a foundation up to 25 million, 10 million for the, for the library. So if you grow up in a country where, as a man, you get to tell women they can't drive, you get to tell women what to wear, you get to say whether they go to work or school or can leave the country, you, get, you, you grow up in a country where they kill gays and lesbians, where they persecute Christians and Jews. She takes their money, they buy her silence. If you grow up in, under that cultural divide, a direct, the direct antithesis to our constitutional republic, why can't we ask well, we if you want to abide by our laws and our culture before you come here? Why is that d described as bigoted? <laughs> not, only, not only should we ask that, that's the oath that you take when you become a citizen of the United States. You renounce allegiance to all other sovereigns. You pledge allegiance to the United States and you pledge you'll give up your life in defense of the United States. So when we say that we want people, as Donald Trump says, that come to the United States who love this country, that's built right into our Constitution. Hillary Clinton doesn't understand our Constitution. She doesn't respect our Constitution. Her knowledge of foreign policy is a joke. Her performance in foreign policy was a disaster. Yeah. Every single thing in well, the world is Well, let me ask the last worse. question. Because Donald Trump said today, now, by the way, CNN, I just read Joe Concha's column in The Hill, he never said racial profiling. He said profile. Now, should well, we profile, profile people that have a huge cultural divide <laughs> and grow up in a society that says, we're going to kill gays and lesbians and we're going to tell women how to dress um, and we're going to persecute Christians and Jews? Sean, I want to profile Sean, them. I, Sean, I investigated lots of crimes, right? Right. I, I, used, I used FBI profilers to help me figure <laughs> out who the, who the killer was, who the person was. If, 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 I have a few little, if I have a few little pieces of information, the guy's 6'5 and he's white, I don't go look for a 5'4 black. Yeah. Profiling is absolutely appropriate and necessary to solve Do you crimes know? So, long, so long as it's based on fact and not prejudice. After 9-11, the, the and city of New York... The NYPD had a mosque surveillance program, and, and comrade Bozo de Blasio is what I call him. Um, he eliminated that program. Was that a mistake? Big mistake. Now, he looked pathetic this weekend. Oh, my. It was so embarrassing. Uh, it was I, humiliating. I was, as the former oh. mayor of New York, I was embarrassed watching him on television. He couldn't even say that a bombing was an act of terror. It was so bad. Governor Cuomo had to come in almost as if he was his mentor and say, hey, by the way, you know, if there's a bomb and it uh, hurts 29 of your citizens, it's an act of terror, then we'll figure out if it's Wait Islamic minute, or Mayor, not. It was an I, intentional act. We, he, we did get yeah, that an information. Intention, an, intentional it was an bomb intentional set. act. But not an act of terror. A bombing in and of itself is an act of terror. It, it can be Islamic terror. The odds are that it, it is an Islamic terror. I'm going to tell you, Sean, the moment I heard about it, the moment I heard what kind of bomb it was, I knew exactly where it came from. Anybody with we are common fighting sense a did. two. We're fighting a two-front war. We're fighting a war over in the Middle East, and we're fighting a war in the streets of America. Well, and Obama, Clinton, <clears throat> and this guy they have on the ticket, uh, uh, Tim Kaine, who says that we're winning. Yeah. If this is we're, winning, the JV I, team. I, I hate to be losing. Yeah, the, we're winning, and we've. How many attacks have we had since San Bernardino? And this guy on her ticket thinks we're winning. He must bad. be living in Mars. All right, Mr. Mayor, thank you for being with us. Thank you.
And by the way, all of you out there, in 50 days, think of the three big issues just on this issue where there are profound differences. Do you want a president that can say the words radical Islam? Do you think it's important for national security to build the wall along our border? And do you think vetting people that come from countries like Saudi Arabia, where they treat women like third class citizens, they kill gays and lesbians, and of course persecute Christians and Jews? Do you think somebody coming from that culture that we should be vetting? Up next tonight, right here on Hannity. We are not going to jump to conclusions. We're not going to uh, offer you easy answers. So we know what we know at this point, and I'd be dubious about speculating on what we don't know. All right, so after the bombings this weekend in New York and New Jersey, Democrats went out of their way to thread the needle. They never wanted to say that this was a radical Islamic terrorist attack. Why this mysterious reluctance resistance? We'll check in with Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North and Dr. Ben Carson. That and much more on this busy news night tonight on Hannity. Welcome back to Hannity. So the Democrats continue to prove they just don't get it. So in the aftermath of the New York and New Jersey bombings, you know what your liberal leaders were telling you? Well, they all said, don't rush to judgment. It's probably not terrorism. No, it's an isolated incident. They're not connected, even though they all happen to have flip phone cell triggers just by coincidence. Watch this. I think it's uh, always uh, wiser to wait until you have uh, information before uh, making conclusions. We're going to be very careful and patient to get to the full truth here. We are not going to jump to conclusions. We're not going to uh, offer you easy answers. We're going to make sure we have all the facts. You can guess, you can hypothesize, or you can just wait for the facts and uh, go from there. So we know what we know at this point. And I'd be dubious about speculating on what we don't know. I would ask that the press try to refrain from getting out ahead of the investigation. It does not help if uh, false reports uh, or incomplete information is out there. All right, here with Reaction Now is the host of War Stories, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. Colonel, you know, once again, the mysterious reluctance, resistance, man-caused disasters, overseas contingencies, workplace sure. violence, and now we're threading a, a new needle here. Um, this was an intentional act. It was yeah. intentional. A bomb being set. Geez, talk about stating well, the obvious. And then we have Josh, Josh Ernest saying it's a narrative war. I would commend to him to pay a little attention to all the bodies that have come back draped with American flags. Look, at, I've got the answer for them. And I don't want to take a second from Ben Carson because I know he's up next. Here's the slogan for the next commander in chief of the United States of America. Stop the jihad. It doesn't matter the trade name, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, Abu Sayyaf. All of them are just different trade names for these franchises from hell. All of them pushing the same product, death to infidels like us. Here's how to stop the jihad being waged against us. Number one, it's not enough to condemn in the strongest terms or beg for more time or investigations. We stand shoulder to shoulder. That's baloney, and the jihadis know it. Number two, stop guessing about whether the perps are directed, inspired, radicalized, or lone wolves. They're all jihadis. Pledge to stop the jihad. Number three. Commander-in-Chief has to lead Western leaders to no jihadi safe havens where self-proclaimed leaders like al-Baghdadi and Zawahiri can create their own propaganda. Number four, they have to be killed. And when they're killed, don't hold a press conference to show pictures of POTUS and his pals wringing their hands in the sit room. Number five, forge a Sunni Kurd, Egyptian, Jordanian, UAE, Saudi force to end the Syrian civil war and keep the peace. Number six, the next Commander-in-Chief has to cancel the Iran nuke deal and break the perception that the United States is joined at the hip with the Ayatollahs in Tehran. It will deny a hot button issue to all jihadis. Number seven, keep Gitmo open, try enemy combatants in military tribunals, stop the unvetted refugees from entering the United States, and start a public diplomacy program like we did against the Soviet Union with solidarity, radio liberty, radio freedom. And finally, just like the mayor just said a moment ago, America's mayor was right. Reactivate the surveillance programs like New York Police De Department uh, Commissioner Kelly created back when he was mayor and that de Blasio abandoned. There's the eight ways. And by Colonel, the way, the only were, way those things, and I agree wholeheartedly with all eight on your list, that's going to happen is if Donald Trump is elected because Hillary won't do it. Let, let me give you another example. She not only screwed up, you know, voting for the Iraq war, then 
giving yeah. a date of return and then saying, oops, sorry, we made a mistake. Sorry about your sons and daughters dying. I'm, I'm sorry about you being disfigured and losing your legs and your arms. Uh, we have to learn from that. But she's made a lot of mistakes. Then we've got, we've got Iraq, Afghanistan, and we've got Syria. Then you've got, of course, the Russian reset. She hasn't done right. anything with North Korea. Add to that, though, Donald Trump met tonight with President al-Sisi of Egypt. Yep. And Hillary, though, and Obama, they supported the former Muslim Brotherhood Morsi. head by the guy, a guy by the name of Morsi yep. and gave him F-16s tanks and 1.5 billion taxpayer dollars, a guy that once referred to the Israelis and Jews as descendants of apes and pigs. Is there any place foreign policy-wise that you can point to where she has, had, has a success story to tell? Yeah, yes, she she traveled to more places than any previous. That's Secretary not a success story. I, I, I'm just that's part of her legacy. Look at Sean. We cannot undo the damage that these people have done in the last eight years. What we can do is rectify it. And the ways you rectify that is having a foreign policy that's America first. I, I don't. I'm not trying to quote a campaign, and that supports the ideals of the American people. We don't have that today. One of the big reasons why they're they're. The, the, dis, the disconnect that's occurred is because the folks who've been running our government for the last eight years are in nirvana. Look at the way they talk. They don't, they don't want to make a conclusion about a bomb going off, for crying out loud. I mean, everything that they have done has been done wrong. We can't undo what they did, but we can fix it. Well, I agree, Colonel. Uh, you had it right, I had it right, and they had it wrong. And the Iranian deal is at the heart of the worst decision Absolutely they've right. made. Libya second, Iraq and Syria a, a close first, second, and third, and Egypt another mistake. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Bless Safe you, home. brother. Appreciate you. All right. Joining me now, former 2016 presidential candidate, Dr. Ben Carson. Dr. Carson, what is your reaction to this mysterious reluctance and resistance to say the words radical Islam? Why is that so hard? I, be, I believe it's the, the loss of common sense. Uh, people are so caught up in their political correctness that they lose control of rational thinking. And unfortunately, this is exactly what the radical Islamists want. The memorandum of understanding that was uh, uncovered during the Holy Land Foundation trial, they, they found this memorandum, and it talked about civilization jihad, how they would be able to take over here, and they would use our political correctness against us. And it really is quite silly, and it seems like all we have to do is look at Europe, look at France, look at Germany. Uh, can we learn from their mistakes, or do we have to make the same mistakes over again? It really is just maddening how we've completely lost our senses. You know, and, you know, this whole thing about profiling, you know, forget about the label. People are so concerned about the label. If you know there's a mass murderer who's seven feet tall and has green eyes, and you're in a room full of people, which ones are you going to look for? You're going to look for the tall ones with green eyes. Doesn't mean that every tall one with green eyes is the one, but certainly that's the group that you need to be concentrating on. That's common sense. Dr. Carson, we're 50 days away from Election Day, tonight, 50 days. So I view this as one of the biggest choice elections. Number one, Supreme Court. It'll impact this country for generations. Extreme vetting or no vetting. A wall, as Trump wants, or a bridge in, in what Hillary wants. Saying radical Islam, not being able to say it. You know, Obamacare, eliminate it, repeal it, replace it, or keep it. And on so many big issues, education, energy independence. Absolutely. These are deep and profound differences between these two candidates. What do you say to those but, Republicans that, that have been sabotaging and undermining Donald Trump and, I would argue, helping Hillary Clinton in the process? I would say to them, this is not going to be a four- or an eight-year issue. You think that we can just blow through this and Hillary will be okay because she's a known quantity. Wrong. The problem here is that when you get the federal court system and the Supreme Court in the hands of those radicals, it will be there for a generation or two. Oh, at and least. the United States will oh. never be the same again. I, I don't know That's if we recover. That's what they recover. need to understand. Economic policy, we, we raising recover. taxes, cutting taxes, energy independence, uh, education back to the states or top-down common core from Washington, you know, supporting, supported by the NAAs. Absolutely. It's deep and profound. And you know, it's not... It, it, 
It's not a Republican or Democrat issue. This is an American issue. People have got to get beyond that because we're talking about our children. Are we going to see you in uh, Ohio, on, in Cleveland on uh, Wednesday for our town hall yes. with Mr. Trump? I will be there. All right, we'll see you there. Dr. Looking Carson, thank you. It. Okay. And thank coming you. up next tonight, we'll give you details on that town hall in a few minutes, but up next on Hannity. We want people to come into our country, but they have to come in legally through a process, and we need extreme screening. After a wave of terror attacks right here on U.S. soil, Donald Trump is calling for extreme vetting of refugees and immigrants. We'll check in with Dr. Sebastian Gorka. He's next. That and more tonight, straight ahead on Hannity.